The Pack Horse Library Initiative was one of the projects funded through the WPA. Established in 1935, this initiative was dedicated to bringing literature to residents of Eastern Kentucky, who were deprived of literacy and opportunity due to physical barriers such as their remote location and societal barriers such as lack of educational opportunities. The Great Depression was a time of hardship for all Americans. There was little food and even fewer job opportunities especially for those living in rural areas. As the world everyone knew crumbled away, President Franklin D. Roosevelt founded an organization dedicated to restoring one aspect of citizens' lives, their jobs. He founded the New Deal, and Americans finally felt hopeful that there could be an end to the Great Depression. With the New Deal in place, we were able to institute many organizations that employed millions of Americans. The Works Progress Administration, otherwise known as the WPA, was founded under the New Deal and it created jobs for approximately 8.5 million unemployed Americans. The Pack Horse Library Initiative was one of the many initiatives founded through the WPA. The Pack Horse Librarians were mostly women but consisted of some men. They traveled on horseback across the treacherous terrain of the Appalachian Mountains of Kentucky to deliver books to children and adults. Pack Horse Librarians brought all types of literature to families living in remote locations. Since all the funding the Pack Horse Librarians received was for salaries, the only books they could afford to deliver were old, damaged books donated by libraries, schools, and churches. When donations became scarce and the number of people wanting books surpassed the amount of supply, the librarians began to tackle this barrier by making scrapbooks to reduce the shortage. These scrapbooks were made of newspaper clippings, magazine clippings, anecdotes, and recipes. Citizens appreciated these books so much so that they began to make their own, which contained sewing patterns, family histories, and family recipes. However, these scrapbooks still weren't enough to service all wanting to be reached. Around 800 books had to be shared between 10,000 citizens per station. Seeing that the Pack Horse Library needed assistance, the Chairman of Library Service for the Kentucky Congress of Parents and Teachers, otherwise known as the Kentucky PTA, created the Penny Fund Plan. The Penny Fund Plan asked every member of the PTA to donate one penny toward the purchase of new books. The Kentucky PTA also received help in the form of donations, from private organizations such as the Boy Scouts, Sunday School Classes, and other groups. Through the PTA's efforts, eight new Pack Horse libraries were opened, and existing libraries grew. One of the Pack Horse librarians, Mary Ruth Schuler Dieter, traveled through the wilderness as a young girl to deliver scrapbooks to remote families. Some of these families resided in poorly insulated homes with little to no food. They often had to rely on newspapers glued to their walls to provide insulation and each other's body heat to survive the harsh conditions. My name is Mary Ruth Schuler Theater. I'm 97 years old. We traveled on the horses riding down in the mountains of Kentucky, a very poor country. I was delivering books to the children. Pack Horse Librarian. It was one of the works of President Roosevelt. We forded Greasy Creek, take the horses across. We wore boots and pants. They were so happy to get a book, tickled to death. We always sat under the big old chestnut tree. They didn't know how to read, so I read it and read it again so we could understand it. Pack Horse librarians traveled 18 to 20 miles a day to deliver books to houses and schools. They traveled across physical barriers such as mountains, creeks, and rivers. They often dealt with extreme weather conditions such as pouring rain and snowstorms. Traveling to these homes, they used creeks and fence lines as roads to cross the mountains and valleys, which separated residents from society. These dedicated workers put themselves in danger every day so the people of Eastern Kentucky could have literature.
Access to education in Appalachian, Kentucky during this time was one of many barriers that Pack Horse librarians were able to conquer. In 1934, 20,000 schools had closed down nationwide. Teachers were quitting because salaries weren't being paid, and those who didn't quit were getting promises rather than paychecks. With fewer teachers, there were bigger classes, forcing curriculums to be stripped. These problems were identified when the National Youth Administration, also known as NYA, had approximately 750,000 students enrolled, but many didn't have basic reading, writing, or vocational skills. The nation addressed these problems by offering education courses, mainly in the basic skills of life. In rural areas, such as Appalachia, Kentucky, schools began to fall apart due to disuse as students dropped out in order to work on the family farms. Many children and adults were illiterate during this time, so access to these books gave them the opportunity to learn to read that they would not have otherwise had. The librarians often went above and beyond their duties of just delivering books, and would spend time reading the books to the illiterate before embarking on their next journey. Literacy not only brought knowledge, but happiness. This knowledge would not have been attained if not for the courage of these women who stepped up to deliver literature to the uneducated. Women of this time period were still struggling with the discrimination forced upon them by unforgiving men and women. Although the 19th Amendment was ratified 15 years earlier, women still faced much discrimination in the workplace. In 1935, women were still facing these problems, but many women rose above what some men thought females were capable jobs. of doing. Women's wages increased, in spite of the fact that the jobs women were allowed to have were restrained. Women were portrayed and swayed by the men to take clerical jobs, such as nurses or front desk jobs. These jobs were not as affected by the Great Depression as other factories and working jobs were allowing women to continue to grow in our society. The women's rights barrier was not broken with the coming of the 19th Amendment. That was just the first step. And even today, that barrier has yet to break as women still face unequal pay nationwide. The Pack Horse librarians personally overcame that barrier, the barrier that certain men and women were putting up and took up the responsibility to help others in need. The initiative ended in 1943, when government funding for the project was cut off and redirected towards war efforts. However, this program left a mark on our history and continues to affect our society today. By facing and overcoming these barriers, the Pack Horse librarians proved that women can do meaningful things in life, despite what some men say. In 1954, the state of Kentucky even started a bookmobile program to continue the spread of literacy and education. In 1956, Carl Perkins, a congressman from Kentucky, sponsored the Library Service Act, or LSA, which created the first federal approbations for library services. Perkins formerly taught in Knott County at a school which was serviced by the Pack Horse Library. The Pack Horse Librarian's devotion to their job certainly impacted Perkins' view on the LSA. The Pack Horse librarians worked tirelessly through harsh weather conditions, rough terrain, and discrimination towards women to bring literature to the residents of Appalachia. Their relentless efforts and unwillingness to let barriers prevent them from achieving their goals allowed them to leave a lasting impact on our nation's history.